Hi everyone and um, welcome to Exhaven Harbour 68, the 68th episode. Um, progress has been a little slow uh, out on the uh, layout but um, there is an update at the end of this. Um, but what I've been doing in the evenings in the meantime is uh, I'm building the Scow Scenes fishing boat and um, I thought it might be a nice thing to video for those of you that, of you that um, perhaps are thinking about doing the Scow Scenes kit um, and you know just as a general point of interest really some of it may be teaching some of you to suck eggs that kind of thing it's just the way that I build or build the Scale Scenes kits um, I've had a few goes at them now and I'm getting better every time that I do them They're, they are tricky but this has certainly been and uh, I mention it in the video a fair bit uh, it certainly helped having the Christendon uh, laser cut parts for it so certainly if you're considering building one worth looking into getting those as well um, so not really much else to say I did forget to say in the last episode because I, I, I mentioned uh, in the previous episode to that uh, that I might change the uh, the name of the channel but I, I'm, I'm not I'm sticking with Exhaven Harbour um, thanks to all of you that have come up with suggestions that's very kind of you um, but as Gary pointed out from Settle and Carlisle, thanks Gary, if I change the name of the channel, well, I won't be able to call Mrs. Exhaven, Mrs. Exhaven anymore. So um, <laughs> it might sound a bit odd calling her Mrs. Exhaven too. Uh, she might not like it. I don't think she really likes being called Mrs. Exhaven to be fair. <laughs> but anyway, so let's get on with it. Um, I'm gonna break this uh, scale scenes um, fishing boat build down into a few sections so I'm probably going to do 15 minutes I think that'll be more than enough uh, until we complete it so um, what I'm going to do is going to release this this week as my usual um, video every two weeks and then I'm going to release another 15 minute segment next week and so on and I'll include another one the week after that may do it that may do it but it may go to four so we'll see see how that goes um it's not a complete in-depth build but there are bits and pieces that i think might be relevant and um but it all adds up over a period of time so um there we go but thanks very much and uh i'll leave you with it and uh i'll do uh, a little finished piece at the end okay so see you again cheers right hi and welcome back um so for this little um video i think we're going to do in connection with the uh the bridge that we've been building recently or the uh the drop section on the layout um, this is the fishing boat that I want to get underneath the bridge, so I've decided just to build it. Uh, this is the T, T030A fishing boat from Scow Scenes. And uh, rather interestingly, I've also bought from, if you see in the bottom right hand corner of these sheets, I'll just focus in on that, www.chrisinden.co.uk. I've bought the end scale uh, laser cut pieces, um, which is a bit of a time saver more than anything. Um, although I'm not sure whether that's going to save me any time at all, but we're going to use it for this exercise just to see. Um, basically, what I've done is I've printed out all of the sheets that I need, and what I do is these are, I don't know whether you can just see the faint line down the, this edge here where my finger is, these are A4 uh, sticky labels. I print them out on that, and then usually I stick them to the relevant card. So on each sheet you'll find that there's a, lot like on this one it's medium card, this one's light card, 
this one I think is heavy card and this one here these are just sort of covered and this is just print only these are just like cover sheets or different uh, registration codes for the boats so obviously when you purchase a Scousings kit you can print it as many times as you like so there's a fair few options there for different boats so um, I'm going to get on now I'm going to cut out all the pieces that I need obviously I'm going to read the instructions and um, we'll take it from there and I'll come back to you at relevant points and uh, yeah that's where we're at so we'll have a go at this and we'll see how it turns out right so every time I start a new project um, we have a fresh blade and I use these Swan Morton scalpels um, and the blade type is uh, 10A I believe it does actually say it on there somewhere yeah I don't know whether you can see that uh, let me bring that down there just here you can see 10A now I'm just going to change that so uh, bearing in mind these are all very very sharp um, and even though this has been used on other projects that is very sharp indeed still and um, I would you know handle with care is what we say so there we go it's quite a simple operation but I always use these pliers to do this um, because obviously I don't really want to get my hand close to the to the actual scalpel blade these are non-surgical blades these one you can get you can buy surgical but they're more expensive um, okay that's it um, but I buy them in packs of a hundred and for the life of me I can't remember how much they are but they're not any more than about ten pounds I think but um, I've, I've currently got about 150 blades so it should last me some time so uh, hope you found that interesting um, just some other tools that I use when I'm making scale scales, scale scenes kits uh, a pair of scissors obviously the metal ruler glue um, and I've got these scissors here these are I suppose you'd call them um, now scissors really but they're not they're, they're made for modeling and they're extra sharp and uh, they're quite good for cutting round corners actually because they they've got a curve and um, they're quite useful at times and uh, they've been a, a godsend actually and I've just got them off of eBay can't remember how much they cost but I got them some time ago and uh, they've been pretty good okay so be back to you shortly right okay so um, what we've got um, these are, are from this sheet here or the the keel I guess they're calling it uh, I've just cut this out and I've just used scissors um, it's quicker and easier than using a scalpel um, and now what I'm going to do and I, hopefully this will come over and I can keep it on the camera um, I'm going to peel this off because this is obviously printed on the sticky A4 label and we're going to stick it to the laser cut part uh, provided by Chris in Den and um, what I normally do, this would be, I usually peel the whole label off and stick it onto an A4 piece of card, the relevant type of card, heavy card, light card, uh, or medium card. Um, so in this incident, I'm just trying to see what it is like using the laser cut card because I, I'm actually, I, the more I think about this, I'm probably making more work for myself because I would have had that cut out now and it would have been stuck onto the card already. <laughs> so uh, anyway, let's let's do this. Let's see if I can get this on the camera. And uh, what I'm going to use to peel this off is, hope, hopefully that's still, yeah, 
I'm just going to very carefully get the edge of the label here she comes it's a little bit fiddly doing it this way there we go so get rid of that and very carefully bearing in mind I haven't done it this way before so if I just get that in there like that <laughs> I hope this is still in view and I'm sorry my hands are in the way probably right so that's on there fairly accurately There we go, got it in the end. So now I've just got to follow the instructions. We've got to make up um, what, what what do we call this? Right, yeah. So next next is getting all the bulkheads, and uh, I believe a lot of the bulkheads are on here. It's all of this, so they will fit across here. Uh, they're all, I don't know whether you can see that, but it's got A, B, C, D and so on, as has this. So I just need to get them sorted and we'll get them on there. So I'll come back to you shortly. Right, so this is much easier. <laughs> um, what, I've, what I've done is just cut out the centre the centre line uh, for, oh, I always forget the words, um, the bulkheads. <laughs> this is the centre line for the bulkheads now. Um, as you can see, I've glued them in. They've, they've, it saved a lot of cutting out, I've got to say that. You know, if I'd have uh, printed that out, stuck my label on the sheet, I would have been still cutting there now, but I'm in now in a position to uh, glue uh, and it would have probably taken me an hour or two just to cut that lot out and as you can see in the background these are the cross pieces the cross members cross bulkheads that will slot onto there uh, and another lovely thing and i don't i think you can see it probably on this one here and they've all got it they've got a like a curved edge and you know that would just take longer to cut out um, if i was just doing it with the scissors or a scalpel so yes it is a big time saver and uh, at the moment I'm absolutely recommending it uh, as you can see I've got my engineers square that just helps me set these up nice and straight um, so yeah there we go right that's most of the bulkheads done now just got the center ones to um, cut off the laser cut sheets um, and then I'll come back to you after that but they've gone in really well what What's lovely is that they're obviously cut so precisely that they fit perfectly. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, when you're making a Scalcene's kit, 
things have got to be pretty precise. And uh, this is, you know, early days yet, but hopefully it makes a big difference. Right, so basically that's the bulkheads done, uh, and it's also completed the hold. Now an interesting thing with the laser cut parts is obviously they don't come <laughs> uh, with with the uh, the cover layers on all the almost like the uh, the picture. So what what you have to do is just cut out the pieces. Now in the hold, all the sides, and I don't know whether I'm going to be able to show you this too well, but they're all sort of kind of uh, pre-coloured and weathered. So I've just cut them out and stuck them on and uh, it's come out really quite nice actually. Uh, the lovely thing about Scale Scenes kits are that they are pre-weathered and inside the hole, hold it looks like this. Uh, I don't know whether you can just see down here in the bottom right hand corner there. It's a bit too dark but just down there where my finger's pointing. It's, uh, there's all bits of rust and, and so on and uh, it, it looks really good. So. Um, yeah, just move you back a little bit there. So that's the, uh, like I say, all the bulkheads fitted, uh, and that has been much quicker than it would have normally taken. I've probably been at this now for an hour and a half. Uh, I haven't been completely going at it for an hour and a half because I had to uh, make a phone call and do a few other bits and pieces. But uh, yeah, we we are in a good situation there, and like I say. Because you're using the laser cut kits, everything is so precise, so that's really good. That will bode well for when we put the sides on and and the deck and so on in the end. So, um, yeah, so that's where we're at, and I'll come back to you when I've completed the next segment. Right, okay, so we're going to have a little break now. <laughs> uh, the eyes have just gone, really. Um, so, basically what I've had it round the hold, there's a, a piece around there that will cover up the uh, the edges, and uh, I put the uh, I think it's called the bow cover on there. That this sort of grey, it's a wrap, wrap. It just wraps around and sticks on. So uh, that's where we've got. I'm happy with the progress so far. It's all looking good. Um, so I'll come back to you in the next segment, which may be tomorrow. Uh, depending on how I feel, and uh, we'll take it from there. Speak to you soon. Cheers. Right, okay, so you join me now. Um, um, hopefully you'll be able to see this. I'll just have a quick lean over. See if I can get that in there. Yes, that you should, if I do that there. So if I keep my hand there. So we're cutting out the deck off of the A4 sticky label. So... I generally do this with scissors. These scissors are just, um, I think these are craft scissors from Ikea. And I bought a pack of them some time ago. And they're very helpful. I mean, when I first started doing scale scenes kit, I used to use the scalpel for everything. And to be honest, he says, hopefully, <laughs> that the scissors are a little bit quicker and probably a little more accurate. And the scalpels used for very small things. So I'll just cut that off there like that. I've got to about there. there but I thought I'd show you just some bits and pieces of this because there's not many not that I've seen anyone on YouTube people showing you how to do a scale scenes kit especially in Engage and uh, this might just give you a few ideas some of those of you that haven't attempted a scale scenes kit Uh, the way that I go about it but it's not necessarily the right way and like everything we do in our hobby there's 
there's never really a right or wrong way to do it. As long as you're happy doing it the way that you're doing it. It's great to get advice from people though. And there's just a little bit left to cut there. I hope this is cutting out. Oh, coming out on the video. Otherwise it'll be another piece that needs to be deleted. Yeah, there we go. That looks all pretty good to me. So yeah, cut out with scissors pretty accurately, I would say. Yeah, you can see that, can't you? Yeah. So I'll be back to you in a second. Right, so now what we're going to do, um, the decked boarding piece is obviously on the sticky label, and the white piece here is the Christenden laser cut piece. Okay, so this will fit across the top of there in a minute once I've done that. So um, I've already kind of showed you how that I sort of peel it off and stick it on, so I won't bore you with that. We've seen how I cut it out, and then we'll come back for the fitting. Right, okay, so this is um, a great example of what can happen. It's not quite gone on to the um, laser cut piece. Um, so, it's not the end of the world. We can either cut that, and by the looks of it, I can cut that just in, I can just cut that with the scalpel and get that off, actually. But another thing that I can do, I have a little tin of cheap watercolor paints. I think this cost me a pound from the works. And if you just get like the brown, you can see that's quite well used, that would go on there and, and cover that up. But I don't think I really need to. I'll just cut that out. I think that's going to be okay. So anyway, I'll come back to you with my solution in a minute. Right, okay, so I'm just going to go around the edge with a little bit of this brown paint. And uh, I've got a very small brush. And, you know, you won't notice this. When it all goes together because this is just watercolor and it just dries out a bit lighter than it might appear on the screen i've test i've dry fitted it or test fitted it and it and it's fine it's absolutely fine but i just think if we just do this around the edges I'll just sort of fix it off and to be honest it will just look a little bit rusty which is kind of what you want on a fishing boat but you know like I say there's a solution for most things and I haven't done it wrong it's just slightly out and I wouldn't have thought the uh, laser cut part is slightly out it's, it's me that's slightly out I might have just taken a, a millimetre or so or and, and just lay the deck down a little off off key but you can see what i'm doing and we'll leave that for there and i'll come back to you when it's done right so i put the deck on another test fit and as you'll see i've painted all around the edge there and you know it won't know when the sides go on the on the boat that'll all be covered up and to be honest i think it gives it a little bit of weathering you know or it will so um yeah that's worked out rather nicely um i've just got to stick it all down um i've given it in the instructions it says to give it a the deck a slight curve so i've done that as well now so it's just a matter of sticking that down now um and i'll find a couple of weights to stick on it and uh, let that sort that sort itself out and then we'll um go from there right okay just to sort of finish up this uh this video um for this week uh there are more holes filled uh i've just done these uh i've done three 
today in the past couple of hours um, they've all gone in there rather nicely and um, there's another one over here setting up um, the reason why that's got a load of stuff on the top of it it's got two layers of cork to bring it up to the right level um, because uh, originally when I originally built this uh, the baseboards had I think it was 9 9 mil MDF and then I had some sheets of 3 mil um, plywood and uh, I just covered it in the plywood as well just to give it some extra strength and extra protection so there we go so we're getting there now um, you know as ever being delayed by outside influences but um, I have got if I'll slowly pan round across the mess um, I've got these holes to fill in here now <clears throat> I'm still in deep thought again about having a lower section because it's going to be so difficult to actually get that down there even with uh, a helix I was going to buy a helix um, in the end but it is very very tricky to get the track on a track plan to run down there how I want it to so <clears throat> it, be it, left. it may be left and I might just have to uh, sort of manhandle the trains off here and there although having said that there's going to be plenty of storage on the on the layout anyway but um I know we can never have enough storage but we'll uh, we'll just have to see how that goes but um anyway thank you ever so much for watching um i hope you enjoyed the start of the series on the scale scenes um fishing boat um i hope it's not too boring for you i'm going to break it down into segments and we'll fit them in the videos every two weeks i might even release another one <coughs> separately after a week and, and just sort of give you 15 20 minutes of it because it's i can't say un unless you're really interested it's it's probably not riveting viewing but um i don't want to knock it because some people like to see how to do those sort of things especially if you've never done it before um and see how other people go about it i'm not saying i'm the best but uh i like to have a go and uh it, it was nice to have the opportunity to show you how to do it okay so thanks to all the new subscribers another nice little chunk come on this past few weeks and uh, i'll catch up with you all soon cheers em